What did we just watch? I know that's what you're all thinking, and I am about to break down why Roger Federer lost to John Millman in the fourth round of the Australian Open in 2018. Here's the slice. Welcome to the slice. Hi guys, welcome to the slice. <laughs> Okay, let's get to the bottom of it, folks. If you're a Fed fan here, uh, my condolences. You, I feel your pain, obviously. If you're a Nole fan, you're probably happy, but you're probably pretty confident that Nole was going to take it to Federer anyways because you know that's kind of how it's gone at the U.S. Open. If you're a Nadal fan, you're happy Federer lost because they don't have to play in another final, and that hasn't gone well for Nadal in the past two years. So there's a range of emotions here, but let's try and tie it together as tennis fans and figure out what happened in this match. But before we get into it, a little ask from you guys, from the Slice fans. If you could hit that subscribe button, that would really help me out. And if you could donate one or two dollars a month on Patreon, which is the link in the bio, that will help me want to keep doing this. Because I'm very sad right now because Federer lost. Because I'm obviously a Fed fan, you all know that. But what happened tonight was not right. Federer was not right. There was something off in his game, and I think it became a lot more apparent as the match went through. The match started off pretty routine. Federer doing his normal thing, looking good. Second set started off looking good again. I, I did notice at the beginning of the second set, John Millman actually tuned in in the second set. John Millman was hitting big, and I was like, this guy can ball, this guy can play, and he's fiery, and he's got like he's clicked in. He's going for it. But you know, a lot of players have been clicked in and going for it while playing Federer. And it's not worked out too well for them, so I wasn't worried. And then Federer breaks in the second set, I think, to go up. And then he's uh, serving for it at 5-4, I think. And then he gets broken. And then he's, Milman somehow comes back and wins that set. So I, all, all's fair in play and love and war there. That's all good. Federer got broke then. And then he got, I think he got tight at the end of that set and lost it. And Millman stepped up and played some big balls tennis. But then I think Federer's back literally got tight from at the end of the match because I don't know what was going on with the amount of drop shots he was doing, with the amount of, it just didn't seem like he was moving his feet to balls and he was just trying to club everything. He was missing stuff in the net that we never see him miss. I mean, it was just insane. Like some of the points where you're just like, everyone in the crowd was just going like jaw dropping. They didn't know what they were watching. Ivan Lubitsch, Federer's coach, was just, he was like a salt man. Like he was just staring straight ahead and he just saw pain in his eyes. Probably going like, I'm probably getting fired after this. Or just going, I might walk away because I don't want to be on this ship as it's going down at the end of the year here with Federer. That sounds pretty depressing. But this match was pretty depressing if you watch, as if you know what Federer can normally play like. So my theory is, if you guys get mad, oh, Federer was injured. Federer's never not injured that often. But I honestly think this match, he was not moving right. And I've just watched enough of him playing to know that, I think. The biggest thing, though, in this match that was not right was his serve. This was, I would, I don't know if there's been a worse serving performance from him in his, in the recent memory. In the first two sets, he didn't get above 40% first serves in. And in the second set, it was 34%. 34%. I would, I normally say you got to hit around 65% first serves in to win. And he was at 34%. So that's, atrocious and he had already hit about eight double faults by that point so there's something going on there uh and john millman was loving it he was having a day at the park playing with this and the cool thing was so anyways so his serves were off 10 double faults in the at on the on the match and only 12 aces 12 aces is normally what Federer would hit after the first two sets um so just something was completely off there probably no one knows why Federer might not even know why but i'd say that your back affects your serve a lot um, and then I, from when I saw him moving to balls, like short balls, awkward balls, deep balls, not right. And then I think that's why he resorted to a lot of slicing and a lot of um, chipping. And we didn't even see him pumped up like pretty much at all in the entire match, which is not normal as well when he's trying to fight and trying to get back into it. He seemed like he was honestly just kind of done with that match, especially when he broke in the fourth set to go up and then he got broken right back. That was kind of breaking the camel's back in that sense. So I think Federer, worst serving performance I've seen in a super long time. Didn't play mentally well in the second set and then gave Jonathan Millman the chance to pull off a massive, huge upset, which credit goes to Jonathan Millman or John Millman. He did because a lot of people have had chances to upset Federer and it just doesn't happen very often, once in a blue moon. But John Millman stepped up and he was playing locked in huge tennis right from the get-go and he, his level never wavered. I would say it picked up 
uh, he started serving better in the third and fourth set. So all credit going to him. And I, I was like, I've never actually even watched this guy play before. I was like, is this guy, what is this guy, a wanker from Australia? What type of player is this? But in his post-match interview, he's talking about how you know, he could only control the things that he could control, and he happened to catch Federer on an off-serving day. That's what he said. And I really respect that because and he didn't celebrate too crazy. He just was like, I've been working at this. And he has been working at this. He's I've I heard that he's been on the challenge. He's twenty nine, so he's not young. He's a journeyman in the most complete sense of the word. But he's been on the challenger tour for seven years grinding, getting back from injuries, grinding more. And I was at one of the challenger tours uh, a couple of weeks ago, if you saw my interviews with Kokanakis and Daniel Evans, who's on the come up again. And it's not, it's a little bit glamorous, but it's still not glamorous. They're not making much money at all, and it's a total grind. So to see somebody's work pay off after all this time and win a fourth round match against Roger Federer, the GOAT, uh, at the US Open is just pretty cool because he's obviously made a ton of money and a ton of ranking points. And now he's going to play Novak Djokovic, who I don't think he'll beat, but he's got a decent chance, or he's got a chance at least the way he's playing because uh, Djokovic has already lost a couple sets. So let's, let's look quickly at the other quarterfinals because this is obviously the biggest story. So Federer lost because. He had an off-serving day, and I think something was wrong with him physically, physically and mentally. So, and then you know that's what happens when you're not on. Guys can step up, and that's what happens. That is why Federer lost. So, in I think the most interesting quarterfinal, we have Rafael Nadal versus Dominic Team. Obviously, they have a storied rivalry now on clay, but I think this is a big upset alert for for Nadal because he has lost a set to Bashfieldsville, who also played Unreal. Did anyone see that? That guy's in backhand it was absolutely nuts. Nadal dropped a set there. He's playing good. He's not rolling people like he was last year. But team is playing really good, I would say. He is playing so clean. And he's I think because the courts are really slow at the US Open, this plays right into team's um, game. And he's been learning how to play on hard court. So I think this is a big match. And I think Nadal could be on upset alert. But be don't be surprised if he gets through that. Del Potro, I think, will roll Isner. But you never know. Del Potro is looking maybe the best in this whole tournament out of anyone, I would say. So if Del Potro plays Nadal, I would say another tough match for Nadal there, who is still, I would say, maybe the number one favorite to make it through. But I'd say with Federer out, Djokovic is now maybe the favorite because he would have to play Millman, who probably is going to have the classic upset and then a letdown match. Uh, then he'll either have to play Chilich, Chilich or Nishikori. Got to give Djokovic the advantage there. So Federer lost. Massive news. Fourth round, one of his earliest exits since 2016. One of, not the, but one of. Um, so... If Federer fans, if you need a helpline, you can hit me up on Instagram at the Slice Tennis and message me there. I will be up all night answering your DMs and talking with you how to get through this in a mentally healthy way. Thanks, folks, for watching. Uh, subscribe to the Slice if you haven't already, and head to theslicetennis.com to read all the best tennis articles on the planet.